live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel and nature photography. Uh, we're on episode number six, and so far it's been a great ride, although I have to admit, having a live show um, is very stressful because this is our sixth show, and I think we've had three shows where we had technical problems right before the show, and one show we had technical problems during the show. Today is one of those days, and so we are broadcasting live from our, uh, my, my iPhone instead of from the fancy, expensive computer setup that I have. <laughs> anyway, thank you for sharing this on your news feed, for tagging and making comments. We really appreciate it. It helps us feel like we're doing something valuable. Today, my guest is Cindy Baldwin. Cindy has been a travel agent for 12 years and she's had her own business Baldwin Travel for four years. Last year, just last year, she won the Oasis Top Producer Award 2015 and and you've been what to 27 countries right? so far yes 27. So thank you for being on the show. Oh it's so nice to be here thank you for so having me. Exciting. I met Cindy because she took one of my photography classes and now her daughter Sierra is, is uh, my intern. <laughs> So now, the best advice when you're traveling is to go through a travel agent. But we're also gonna talk on this show about travel apps and different things that can make your life easier while you're planning your travel and while you're on your travel in regards to planning your trip and planning your photography. But now, why, why is it good to go through a travel agent, Cindy? Well. First of all, there's so many things on the internet that it's crazy and you can, you know, you get so confused looking. I pare it all down for you um, I, because I've been to many places. I check out the resorts myself and if I don't, I have other people that do. So I have a wealth of knowledge for that sort of thing. And um, I also don't charge anything. So I have a way to save you money as well. For example, um, I just booked an Alaskan cruise for um, a group of ladies and they you know, found it online, and I did some, did some research and I looked around at some groups that I have, and they don't know that they're part of a group, but um, they are, and as a result, I would save them $1,000 uh, on their cruise. $1,000 each? Uh, for the, for the whole cabin, oh. so 500 each. And then wow. I also was able to get them a $250 onboard credit. So, and, and, and the, uh, the deposit date is further out than if you booked it yourself as well. So if you were to go online and booked it yourself, you would have paid for a couple of thousand dollars more and you would not have had the onboard credit. But because I have access to different groups and things like that, because I'm part of a big consortium called Signature Travel Network and Oasis, and because of that, there's, a, there's 1,200 travel agents that you know are all involved in this and there's all kinds of groups and discounts and things like that that I, can, I have access to that a regular consumer wouldn't. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, now I know Back in the olden days, we always used a travel agent to book our flights and everything, but then the internet, it just seemed to get so easy. But now, for me at least, it seems so much more confusing at this point. And then of course the airlines, they hide all this stuff in, you know, one airline, I'm not gonna say, but I'd like to. You know, that was $50 a carry-on each way. Yeah. They really and that was you. really in the fine print because I read through it because I knew that airline did that. And yeah. they still snuck it up on me. But that's a good point about the airlines. For example, this week I had clients that had $100 vouchers and I handled it for them. So I was on the phone probably an hour, but my clients weren't. They were probably eating lunch or doing something fun, but I was, you know, oh. doing that for them. And you get paid by the... I, like by the hotels, by the yes, yes, so the suppliers, and that doesn't mean that you pay more money. Right. That just means because if you said, say you booked a Marriott, the the commission is in there anyway. Just Marriott keeps it. Okay. So it's always in there. It's not like you're going to save any money. And like I said, I can get. And you can save. You can. Save I can save money, and also I can bundle things together. And you know, like if you can bundle, for example, um, I had a flight recently, um, kind of a complicated itinerary, Boston to Milan coming home from Palermo, Italy. It was $1,700 by itself. Uh -huh. I was able to get it for $1,300 that, and that included three nights hotel. So bundling it together, you know, really saves you money and works. And that's because I can get contracted rates that consumers can't get. Wow. Yeah. So it's well, a great thing. She's selling me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know all yeah, that. I really yeah. didn't. I, hadn't, I haven't used a travel agent in years yeah, because it just was so easy to do it on the 
but it's not easy anymore. No, because it there's so much be information easy. and conflicting information. You know, uh, TripAdvisor, everybody loves it, and I do use it from time to time, but that company, you know, is owned by Expedia, and they pay people, and they pay restaurants, and they give you incentives. And they did a, uh, just, I think about a year ago, they had a fake hotel, just somebody just put a fake hotel up and just to see what would happen. It got ranked to number one in this little obscure town, and it doesn't even exist. And that's not to say that's always the case. Uh, like if a client wants a, a hotel and I see all bad reviews, I do counter it with a travel agent review site, but I mean, I'm probably not gonna book them at right. that place. But if, if there's really mixed reviews, then you know I'll see what I think. But I didn't know that. That's yeah, oh yeah. Advisor. Wow. Yeah. I'm learning so much. <laughs> Only five minutes into the show. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, it really is. Now, but now for understand photography, we love TripAdvisor, so write us a review on TripAdvisor because it really helps us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get right to apps. Okay. okay, so the first app we're gonna talk about is TripIt. TripIt's little tagline is your own personal travel agent. And basically what TripIt does is, let's see, you can plan every detail of your trip from car rental to lodging to restaurants with TripIt. The thing that I think is really cool with TripIt is that you can just forward your itineraries to their, their email address that they provide and then they organize all the stuff for you, which I think is pretty cool. Are you familiar with that app at all? Um, I use an app that's similar. I guess the main difference is I do it for my clients. My clients don't do it themselves. So they get the app already completed, already done uh, for them. It's also, they both are live with flights. So for example, I might get, and I get notified of everything if there's a problem, because it's live. So if I find out a flight is delayed while they're in the air and then they have a tight connection, I can already go ahead change the change a flight for them or if a flight's been canceled I know that and I can get them on another flight they don't even know there's a problem because they're in the air flying and I have it handled before they land wow. yeah and then the other thing is my um, mine is called the access travel app but that you have and to go you, through me spell it for me right uh, a x u s u s okay yes and mine also comes with travel guides so I upload all these travel guides and um, from where, wherever they're going and they can utilize So if those. you're uploading them to their, they get the access app on their phone. Right. But you're the one who puts all the information I put everything in. in and I can also communicate with them while they're away. They can say, you know, oh, do you have any good uh, dinner reservation, you know, recommendations and I can do some research for them and send it, send it along. I also upload things like, you know, Spanish phrases that are helpful oh. or tipping guidelines and things like that. And that's so it's all really built good. into one app? All built into one app, and it comes with pictures of the hotel, things like that, um, pictures of where they're going and what they're doing. I can also upload vouchers for them, so you know you don't have to carry any paper, everything's right there. Wow. So it's really good. Yeah. That's cool, and if yeah. they lose their phone, you'll take care of putting that to another phone? Or? Oh yeah, and, <laughs> and also they can also email it to their friends, also they can forward it along to their friends or whoever they want. I can also do proposals with it, you know, when I send somebody, you know, if they're doing like a trip to France and there's, you know, a few different stops and trains and all that, I can lay it out that way so it's really easy to understand and they can see how it flows and that sort That's of thing. That's really cool. Yeah, it really is. It's a great tool. Wow, she's I love really it. selling us on using a travel agent, <laughs> isn't she? <laughs> yeah, I had a client recently um, in France and he was with a group of people um, on a river cruise. But he had, you know, he went before the river cruise and after the river cruise he was doing something else. So it was all built into his app as well as all of his tours he was doing with the river cruise company. And he said everybody was really jealous because they were like, what are we doing today? And he'd just go, oh, this is what we're doing today. So oh it was really God, nice. so cool. Yeah, it worked out really well. Wow. All right, so now if you're taking a road trip, the next app we're going to talk about is called Road Trippers. Now, I found Road Trippers before I took my six-week road trip this summer, well May, I was May and June, I took a six week road trip, I drove, my son moved away to Los Angeles. Aww. So his wife went out there first, so he packed up everything and I drove him out there in a minivan. So we took nine days to get to Los Angeles and I took nine days to go back to Atlanta and went through Florida and everything like that. Anyway, I loved road trippers. Yeah, that's a great Have tool. Have you used it? Yes, it's really, it, it really is nice. It does, it's just a great thing to do when you're driving around the U.S. No, I used it 
in planning for planning mm -hmm. because you can go on a regular computer which is easier for me than right. using my phone and uh, I said okay I, I mapped out you know okay we're gonna go from Naples Florida to Los Angeles mm -hmm. and you could like click on an area like I knew I wanted to go to New Orleans because I had never been there right. so I could click on that area and around and it would show different options you could just like you could say everything or you could say just hotels or just parks or yeah. recreation or just attractions or I forget everything there was a lot of choices yeah it gives you some good ideas too and I like as a photographer of course I thought it was a great great uh, resource for finding cool weird stuff to photograph yeah. on the side of the road right because you wouldn't naturally know that anywhere else that you know for instance, I went, if anybody goes on my personal Facebook page, you'll see I've got a picture, my timeline picture is of um, Cadillac Ranch in Amarillo, yeah. Texas. Have, do you know about that? Place? I know about it, but I've never been there. Did you yeah. see my picture on there? I did. It's so, it's so cool. cool. Yeah, it's really Somebody, cool. it's an art, it's an art, art piece, and it's a bunch of Cadillacs, like, sunk into the ground, and people go and spray paint and put graffiti. It's sort of really cool. It's on my yeah. Peggy Farron Facebook page. Um, but places like that, yeah. there were so many cool stops like that. So road yeah. trippers, I, I love Randy's Donuts on that in uh, L.A. It's been around forever. You have the best donuts if you ever go. Oh, yeah, I don't even really like kid. donuts. Yeah, you have a kid in L.A. too. I do, and, and, and you know it's so funny because it's got it's a landmark. It's got a I don't even know how big this donut is, but you can see it from miles away, and it's really oh, old. Goodness. But it was great. So now it's our tradition every time we go. So we go have to go to Randy's. Randy's. Yeah. I have to go when I go. Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> Anyway, Road Trippers is a free app and it works both on your um, iPhone or Android. Next thing we're going to talk about is Gobi. Gobi is also a planning tool, but this is more for planning things like uh, live things to do. It does have neighborhood hotspots like museums and hotels, eateries, things like that, but the biggest value of Gobi is concerts, plays, things that are going on right now. It's a great resource. Are you familiar with that? I am not familiar with that it's one. It's G-O-B-Y. And this, this show is going to be tough on Ashley in the show notes on understandphotography.com. <laughs> okay, here's one for you. TV food maps. You know That's a about great, that? Yes. So what that does is when you're traveling around the U.S., any show that's been on TV, like um, Diners and Dives or Top Chef or any any of those types of shows, you, this app will tell you where there's a restaurant that's been featured on a TV show. Oh, wow, so it's that's really so cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Like our, our, our Rachel Ray's forty dollars a day. She used to have that, and it tells you all of that. So, um, like the Top Chef ho uh, restaurants are real. I, I particularly like those, but they'll tell you where they are in a city and. You know, give you some ideas of food and things like that. So that's a fun app. You oh know, my to, god, to I thought like it was that. really cool. I know we went to um, oh crap, where was it? Tarpon Springs, Florida, was part of my long road trip, and I met some friends there. And we were just waiting for somebody. We looked across the street, and the bar said it's featured on Bar Rescue. So we had to go in and see <laughs> yeah. it because it was on TV. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, how about this? Bring Fido. I love that one too. I, uh, I did a big road trip from New Hampshire all the way to Naples, and I had three dogs with me, little dogs. So I needed to find out what hotels would take dogs oh. and take more than two dogs. Ooh. So Bring Fido was great because it gives you all that information, also tells you um, where dog parks are and just little things like where you can bring dogs to a restaurant. It gives you a lot of tips wow. that, yeah, it's really, it's a great tool. It really does That's amazing. work well. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of people travel with their dogs. Yeah, too. and it's nice to have all that, you know, that information there. And they also have other information on the site too, that, you know, will tell you information about like going, traveling on an airline with your dog and things like that too. Which you're so gonna do, aren't you? I'm doing that, yeah. Bringing your dog to LA? Yeah. Or, is that a secret? <laughs> Not anymore. It's a no. surprise <laughs> for her daughter. <laughs> now it's live. <laughs> Never tell me any secrets. Never. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so next app. Bon Voyage Travel Budget and Expenses. Are you familiar with this one? Yes. Okay, then I'll let you talk about it. So that keeps track of all your expenses. You can upload receipts. If you have a certain budget, it kind of follows it and tells you, you know, how you're doing. 
Um, but it's great to know how much you're spending and what you're doing because it, you just enter it, you know, your restaurant bills, anything like that, and it will keep track of everything for you. Now, did I read that you could take a picture of your receipt? Yes. And it would. You can somehow... do that too. It just, it, yeah, and that kind of uploads it, but it's nice. But does it upload it and then read it and put it into the? You have to enter the information. Okay. Right? Yeah. Because that would be really. That cool. would be really nice. You, should, you guys should do that. Bon yeah. Voyage. <laughs> That would be that would be the nice. ultimate because who wants to type that stuff in? Yeah, now, I'm no. lucky I don't lose those receipts. I know, you know this way it's nice that you can take the picture and keep it, and then you're good. It's nice. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, all right, so here are some things. Mobile passport app. Oh my gosh, that you have to do that if you're if you don't have Global Entry. I do. It's amazing. Global Entry is amazing, but not everybody wants to do that. So basically, what the mobile passport app is, it's free. So you go on their site and you enter all of your passport information and all that so you have a profile. And then when you are away, you can, it's the customs form is on this app. So that little you, blue sheet? Yeah, you don't have to fill it out because it's right on the app. Uh -huh. So what it does is it's kind of like global entry in that you bypass that really long line. This is, you know, for when you come and return from, you know, like Mexico or Europe or something, you know, out of the country. So just, I just came back from St. Lucia last week and the line was atrocious. And all these people were trying to make their connection, and those that had the mobile, um, the mobile passport, they have a special line just like they do for global entry, and they just zip right through, and that's it. You don't have to do oh anything. It's just, God. it's very much like global entry, but it's free, and... Um, now, is it available in It's not airports? available in every airport. Right now, it's available in about 23 airports, I think. You know, big ones like Miami, San Francisco, right. Boston. But it's coming. They're adding it more and more to more airports. That is so, so cool. It really is. It just, I mean, especially when you see that huge line and you can just walk oh, right through. Oh, God, those lines are they're just tough. I, yeah. You know, I, I still don't have the global entry. I keep, I, well, you know what happened with my son? He is doing, he's a musician. He's on a big tour right now, or on several tours. So he's going to Mexico, then he's going to Europe. And so he said, I've got to get the global entry oh, and the TSA pre check. And he lives in Los Angeles, so he went to make an appointment, and they said, we can fit you in in March. Oh, yeah. It took me from, I got mine in Boston, and it took me six months because it was really popular. But that's also a good point about TSA PreCheck. If you're global entry, you get that automatically. It's part of it. And it's only $100 for five years. I mean, it's not an app, but it's a great, a great thing to have. But you know what he did? He made an appointment in San Diego. Yes. And he yeah. drove the three hours to San Diego or however long it is so that he could still get it. That's great. Yeah. yeah so there are really ways great. around that kind of yeah, stuff too. Yeah, definitely. So, all right, let's see what else we're going to talk about. Oh, look, that's where I put that. <laughs> <laughs> Google Translate. Oh, I love this one. It's so much fun because all you have to do, let's say you're, I was in Russia this summer and get a menu and I don't know the Russian alphabet. You know, I can't, you know, like in some languages you kind of figure things out, but there you, I really can't. Yeah. So you go to a restaurant and all you have to do is put um, your smartphone um, when the app's on to the menu and it will translate what it says for you. Just take a look at it and then you know what you're eating instead of eating Same. intestines or something like I know, that. My, you know? dad, my dad has a scary story about eating, I think they were monkey brains or something. Oh my gosh, yes, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but it's great for the, or you know, if you don't know what a sign says, you can hold it up. You can also type into it. So it's a great tool if you don't know how to say something or you're, or they, or actually what's happened with me sometimes is somebody, the person I'm trying to understand will type it in mm -hmm. and then, because I can't well, even. You can talk it in too. Yeah. It's a I, great I have great a thing. story about that because uh, I had a guest here um, from France, right? Oh. Spoke no, no English. English. Spoke no English. I don't speak French. So we would sit, we'd put the phone on the table and we would talk through the phone. And mostly it was good, but a couple of times, I think one time I, I said something about loving Naples, and it came out that I loved him. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I could get you in a little trouble. We, huh? were, we were just laughing so hard. <laughs> but that's how we communicate. We that's great. We put it on the table, we talk to each it's other. It's fabulous. Translate. It's fabulous. And it, another app, just as an aside, is called Duolingo. I don't know oh, if yeah. you've ever heard of that, but that's really more to get you prepared for your trip. It'll, um, you know, if you're going to France, say, you know, you can take all these little you talk right into your phone and it'll tell you how you're doing 
and it just helps you, you know, kind of get the feel of the language. Little, like little, like they're like one minute classes. Yeah, oh yeah, they're, that's they're, what I've done. Yes, that. It's yes. awesome. It's a really good. It's a great. App. It's Duolingo. Great, yeah. It's also great. I don't have great. that written down, so we're yeah. gonna write that one down. Duolingo. All right, what else? Oh, here's one that oh, I know yeah. we both use this one. I'm sure most of you watching this show use this one. Waze, W-A-Z-E. What do you want to say? Well, I mean, it tell it's live. It's it's a navigation tool if you don't know, and it, it like I use it just if I'm trying to go to, you know, a doctor's appointment or something. Because it, it because it monitors traffic and it will tell you which route to take is the fastest. My daughter lives in L.A. as we were talking before, and she uses it every day for work because on the 405 it's crazy, it's crazy traffic. But I've used it in St. Lucia. Um, St. Lucia, we were uh, driving around on this, trying to get somewhere. It just seemed like we were driving forever and ever and ever. And um, we finally broke down and used wa uh, Waze because it does eat up your data. That's the only thing that, oh, right. that's a bad thing about it when you're out of the country. Especially because you're on roaming, right? Right, yeah. right. But it told us that we were on the right track. We were going the way we were supposed to be going, but we really thought we were so lost. Yeah. And we were about, you know, trying to ask people for help and, it just wasn't working out. Do but they ways, speak English? Speak they do. Okay. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. And they, do yeah, they drive on the field. correct side of the road? No, they they drive on the they're left on side. the other side. There's there's uh, the drivers on the opposite side, and they also drive on the opposite side. So their cars are like English cars. Yes, because I just, as you know, I just got back from Saint Croix. Yeah, they drive on the left side of the road, but the cars are like our cars. Right, like and the, I, it's almost more confusing, I think. If you were in a car on the opposite side, I think it would be easier to remember, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I keep, you know, did you I, drive? Didn't, no, I did not, no. I, I drove this time, <laughs> first time. In fact, sorry for my vulgarity here, but I was driving and the local person with me, she was like, keep your ass to the grass. That's the way you gotta remember, <laughs> keep right next to the grass, you know? That's a good way to remember I was doing it. it the whole time, you See, know? for me, when you go around the um, roundabouts, <laughs> those are horrible, it's, you know, trying to do it the opposite way. Yeah, and any turn. I yeah. was okay if I didn't have to turn. Right. But the turns were <laughs> scary. So, um, yeah, Waze is the bomb. It's great. It, yeah, I really like it. Of course, now I also use Google Maps. I like that too. I, I use like Google that Maps too. more for planning, and that, that, that doesn't suck up as much of your data. Or no, Waze uses a lot yeah. for some reason. But I like Google Maps too because if you don't know how to get somebody somewhere, like we were in Paris this summer and wanted to know how long it was going to take to walk somewhere, and it will tell you, give you turn by turn. That's directions so cool. walking so it's not only for cars it's great for just I did I used it, I used it to go to church and say pray did you yeah, yeah it's a great the phone's talking to me while I'm walking yeah down it's the street. great it's <laughs> such a great tool I love it I do too okay so if you're not gonna drive or walk Uber what, or Lyft yeah there you go yeah they okay. have Uber everywhere even Lyft here, is coming even here in Naples Florida we yeah. have Uber, Uber, Uber they have it in Paris they have it you know San Francisco any you know most Big cities have it. How does it work for those of us who don't? I mean, I, I, on my road trip with my son, we used it, but it was him who used it. Oh. I've never personally used it. So how, how does it work? So you put the app on your phone. You put the app on your phone, and they take you know your credit card information. So you don't actually exchange money with the driver. Okay. And the tip is also on there. Okay. So it's just a cashless society. So it works really well, I and mean, you don't have to be fumbling around for a tip. You don't have to. You know, do anything. You just get in the car and you're done. What I thought was so cool about it that I never saw. We were waiting at the hotel, and Chris was looking at the phone, and you could see yes. where the car, where was, they were when they're coming, how far away it was. So you could watch. And the guy that we, the first, this is my first experience with an Uber. He was driving all over the place. He couldn't find the hotel, so <laughs> we were watching him. Yes. Oh yeah, isn't it funny? And you can tell what door they're at. I know when I was in Las Vegas and I used it, they were supposed to, we were thinking they were coming to one door and we could see that he was going to the other door, so we were running to the other door so we could... That's so cool. Yeah, but it's great. It really Lyft, works out well. Lyft, Lyft is very Lyft? similar, yeah. Um, I've only used it once, but it's, it's becoming more popular. And uh, I used it because somebody else had it and if they had a free ride. Because I think Lyft initially gives you a lot of free rides, which is kind of nice. because oh, they're newer. Newer, yeah. Them, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, what about Metro because that's one you love. I love that too. So um, When I'm in Paris, for example There's a map you can download that shows you all the the whole Paris metro system So if you want to go from point A to point B You just put the metro stops in and it tells you the best route how many stops how long it's going to take And it also weirdly enough has the uber 
um, underneath it, it'll say Uber will get you there in X amount of time. And, wow. Yeah, which is kind of funny. But once you download it and you kind of get everything done, you don't need Wi-Fi to use it. It's great. Oh, it's, yes. it's a nice tool. Like New York has it. You know, big cities all, all have it. That's so, so cool. Yeah, like London, you know, for their underground and things like that. It's a great, great tool. Awesome. Because otherwise it's confusing down there, you know, down in the metro. Oh, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> okay, so WhatsApp. Whoa. WhatsApp is great. Do you have you used that? No, but I just learned about it when I was in St. Croix. They were telling me about it. So it's great. Me. So you download that. You have the only thing about it is both parties have to have WhatsApp to be able to use it. So it's a you can use it for phones, for talking. You have to have Wi-Fi, but you can have text messages. You can send pictures, and this is all free once you have Wi-Fi. So you're not again, you know, eating up your cell phone charges, and you can talk to them too which is great you can do all these things you know from no matter where you are if you're in you know china you can, you can use it as, as long as the other person has it and you have wi-fi so it saves you money oh, yeah. in the end. Well, plus where i stayed the hotel i stayed at i i have uh verizon and i guess st croix and verizon don't get along too well oh. so i couldn't make phone calls from the hotel sometimes when i was out on the mountain i could make a phone yeah. call but i couldn't make phone calls I couldn't receive phone calls and nothing. And so this is great then. So that's why somebody told yeah. me about it, but I had never even heard of it. Until so you didn't try it when you were there? No, I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and so like Facebook, you can kind of do, well, the messaging, if you're on Facebook messaging, that's helpful too. You yeah. can do that and you can call on that too sometimes. If but you everybody, well, well, I mean, the, the main person I wanted to call was my dad's birthday. Oh, yeah. My dad's not going to. He's not going to have it. <laughs> Probably does he have Facebook? Sort of. He, he doesn't go on. We, I think somebody set it up for him, but he, you know, yeah. he's 90. My dad just turned 90. Oh, wow. So. All right. We're going to, we we only have a half hour and we were, we have like, we've done about a 10% of what we're going to talk about. Oh, wow. So I'm, you're going to, you can see the teleprompter as well as I am. You think, if you think we can skip things, just tell me, because I want, we need to get to some, some photography apps. <laughs> okay. Um, local lore, I'll just really briefly tell you, it's only in 16 cities, but it's, it's expanding. They kind of tell you what's going on in the city, kind of like the other app we were talking Go about. It's like a little, yeah, a little guidebook type thing, and it, but it's all from locals, like, you know, restaurant reviews, things like that, you know, what locals like to do. So that's what that is. Oh, locally. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. How about time out? What is this? Well, blah, blah, blah. Great directory of things to do in cities around the world. So that sounds like another same, similar, It's just the same sort of thing as the other. Thing. Around me, that's same the, thing, right? Well, except that um, if you use that, like, in, like say we were in Naples, it would say, oh, there's a store here, there's an ATM here, like you know what's around you, so our gas station. So if you're looking for that kind of thing, or like a TD bank, I mean, there's only one in Naples, I mean, this part of Florida, period, but if I wanted to find it, it would tell me where it is. So uh, that's kind of a good tool, too. Oh, uh, okay, around me, that's called. Yeah. Here's, now Everybody this. loves this, yeah. Okay, you talk, you It's talk. a free Wi-Fi finder, so it'll tell you where you can get free Wi-Fi in whatever, wherever you are. It's not always easy. Yeah, so you, it just uses your GPS or something to track yeah. where you are, yes. and it says, and there are different apps for this. We have we have two written down. One is Wi-Fi Map, and the other one is Free Wi-Fi Finder. Right, and that's awesome. These apps also find the passwords for the free Wi-Fi in public areas, so they'll have to get right in there. Yeah. Tipulator. That's a good one too because people always don't know how much to leave in different countries and things like that. It uses different currencies that will uh, calculate everything for you. It also, if you're with like, you know, seven people, it will split the bill for you. Oh, with that's the tip nice. So you don't have to be, everybody's all out there trying to figure it out. It does After it for you. a couple you. of drinks. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it's a nice tool too. It's easy and it makes it a lot faster too. Okay, now here, this is, how do you say that word? Oanda? Oanda, yeah. Currency converter, that sounds pretty like a good app it is a good app especially you know like some countries you um, you know it's easy like the euro it's easy to figure out but I was um, just where when I was in Russia for example that uh, you know you'd have to do high-level math to figure out or at least I did oh, yeah. but it does it for you and it makes it just easy you know you're gonna buy something you know for X amount of money you just type it in it tells you what it is in US that, dollars that would be really yeah. really really good now we have a few apps like this, but this is the most popular one. It's called Sit or Squat. Yes, it's a good one. 
you have to go to the bathroom, you need to know where there's a bathroom. And it helps you figure that out. And, so, and, it, and is it just public bathrooms? Is, or you any, don't know? Uh, all kinds of bathrooms. Because like in Paris, they, don't, they have hardly any. Oh, they do. They, yeah, hardly any. But now when I was there, the friend I was with said that you could just go to the bathroom in the restaurants, they can't stop you. That was a law, do you know? Uh, I don't know that. But I always, I just I've always the, like, you know, had got a cup of coffee or something if I've been in that situation. Yeah, but they yeah. are, but that was really lot, hard to find there. Well, they had a lot of paint toilets in the restaurant, so I think it's probably true. Yeah. So, but anyway, so um, there's one, the one that I used on my road trip was called Interstate Rest Areas. And that, well, now that I've seen other apps, it wasn't quite as good, but it was a list. So oh. you could say, I'm on I-40, and it would just give you a list of all the exits that had rest areas. That's great. And then... Um, a friend of mine just messaged me this app called iExit, which tells you what's coming up on the exits. So is there a gas station? Is there a donut shop? Is there oh, a bathroom? Great. So it'll just, it reads where you are and says the next that's exit. That's a great app. I don't I exit. Yeah, I heard about that. I just heard about it today. Tom Cunningham sent it to me. Um, how about this one? Do you know anything about gas, gas buddy? Yes, it will tell you where there's gas stations near you and how much the gas is, which one, you know. Which oh, it's one you how much? Yeah, we have, who has the cheapest gas, you know, where you are. So it's a good tool, too. You can even use it, you know, in your regular life when you're not traveling. Yeah, I might get that one for yeah. sure. All right, now we're going to get into some things that are going to help us as photographers a little bit more, not just general travel. One of the things is the National Park apps, okay? There are, there are several. Actually, um, the REI National Park Guide and Maps is probably the most popular one. And it's got, I don't know how many national parks, but it's, it's kind of meant for hikers, but it works for us as photographers as well. Um, it includes, I forget how many parks are in it, but all the big parks are already on this app. Um, and it tracks you so you won't get lost with your GPS the data is available offline That's so great. once you download it you don't need the gps therefore you won't get lost again <laughs> let's hope <laughs> um for hiking it does difficulty ratings things oh, wow. like that um i don't know it's got a lot of different things ne national geographic also has a national parks app might be a little better for photographers because, of course, Nat National Geographic really caters to us right. as photographers. Um, but I'm not familiar with it that much. I didn't even know it existed until I started researching for right. this. <laughs> right. So um, I think, let's see, it says that they have 25 of America's most visited national parks. That's really And that's got photo galleries, visitor information, and detailed maps. Very nice. Uh, oh. Map my hike. Are you familiar with that one? I'm familiar with Map my ride for um, biking. Oh yeah. So, so it's the same, same thing. thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's great. So um, basically, it's a hiking guide or a ride guide. Yeah. If you want to do Map my ride, but you got a bike. <laughs> <laughs> um, and let's see what else. Oh, this. This is a really, really important app. I think it's called Lens Tag. Are you familiar with? That? I am not familiar. Okay. With that. It's a pre-registration database where you can track all of your gear by entering the serial numbers and uploading images of your camera gear oh, wow. before you go. So if your registered if your registered gear is ever stolen, Lens Tag is has a database of the stolen goods so that you can hopefully recover it. You never know, but at least you've got all that in one spot. Yeah, it's also a good, yeah, a good place just to keep track of it. Yeah, yeah. And then of course the little the little tagline says, but still do talk to your insurance company. Yeah, of course. Yes, also. Yes, don't leave that out. <laughs> um, another app I found was called Planet for Photographers. Oh, that's a good one. Do you know it? I don't know it, but it just sounds it's like a great I one. Know. I know. <laughs> it sounds like it would be great. Now there are a lot of apps like this, but this one seems pretty comprehensive. Um, I'm gonna read a little bit, sorry I'm not looking at the camera, I'm reading the, the screen. <laughs> okay, great tool for pre-visualizing the scene in combination with the sun, moon, stars, and Milky Way. It's the ultimate app for those who specialize in photographing landscapes. Wow. Um, let's see what else it says. Uh, da, 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 da. Of course, night photography. Um, the app can show you the angle of view and depth of field on either satellite or, how do you say that word, topographic? Topographic, Topographic yeah. map. Um, 
And it can also tell you if the view is clear, if there are mountains wow. or it's something. Amazing. It, yeah, it could like it'll say, oh, you got a mountain in the way. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take it from there. Um, how many shots will cover the scene if one is not enough? What's the best time to cover the scene? Things like wow, that. That sounds really great. It does sound really good. So now there are a lot of apps similar that maybe aren't as comprehensive. One is Dark Sky Finders, and next week, by the way. Our guest is going to be Bob Brown, and we're going to talk about astrophotography. So this would be a really good app. It's called Dark Sky yeah. Finder. There's a lot of light pollution everywhere. Yeah. I mean, here we are, Naples, Florida, and then Miami is two hours away. But you pretty much, even if you're in the middle of the Everglades, you can still see yeah. all the lights from both cities. I mean, in Naples, it's not even a big city. I know, isn't that awful? So this app helps you find the darkest sky. Chuck Star Chart is another planning for photography. Well, I guess for stargazers too, but yeah. you, know, you want to do the night sky That's photography. That's really nice. Uh, Lumi is another one that it gathers where you are, tells you exactly when the sun will hit just right for the perfect diffused light. <laughs> Wait, with cool? all these apps, you should be able to take fabulous pictures. I know, and yet we still get a lot of <laughs> pictures that you're like, what were you thinking? <laughs> Um, but Lumi, what else does Lumi do, do? Right when you open the app, it tells you exactly when sunrise, sunset, or that critically sought after magic hour that always seems to escape us. Yes. <laughs> sure, you could do the math yourself, but why would you? <laughs> right, if you don't have to. Yeah, it does cost money, that one, but it's three. It's not that much, though. That's not, none of these apps are expensive. I think the most expensive app we're talking about is like eight ninety nine. dollars Yeah, and it's so worth it. And yeah, most of them are free, so... SunCalc.net is a uh, to where the sun is. It's, and same with this one called Sun Seekers. You're able to see the path of the sun and full calendar of sun rises and sets from wherever you are. And that's the one that costs a little bit more, right? It's like that, I think is that, that one was $9.99. Oh, that one was $9.99. Yeah. Oh, I thought I was going to get to the next one. The oh. next one is $8.99. <laughs> okay. The next one seems to be the most popular. And I, I had to go. Um, on the internet to, to see how to pronounce this too. The photographer's effeminate. Oh, now I can forget. I forgot how to say it. Ephemeris. Ephemeris. Hmm. I, I don't know. The photographer's ephemeris. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it, you can buy oh, it, right? Let's see. <laughs> this is a tool to help you plan outdoor photography and natural light, especially landscape and urban scenes. It's a map centric sun and moon calculator to see how the light will fall on the land day or night in any location on earth. And this has a sister app that's called the Photographer's Transit. And that's a map based shot planning tool for outdoor photographers that actually helps you choose the best camera, the best lenses, shooting locations and things like wow. that. That one's $8.99. But those two seem to be very, very popular. Yeah, it's a small investment for all that great For the stuff. Be beautiful images that you're yeah. going to get if you have help. Right, you know? Exactly. I mean, I, I believe it's a good idea to go on to, you know, like we have a Facebook group, you know, about it. Yeah. understand photography Facebook group. We right. have our page and then we have a group. It's a little confusing. But anyway, it's like a forum. Forums are kind of going away because Facebook's taken uh, over everything. Yeah, right. But I mean, for me, when I started planning my road trip, I went on to our Facebook group and just asked people questions yeah. too. What's the best app? Where should I go? What should I see? Because yeah. it's always a good idea to ask other people. Oh, absolutely. Right? Um, easy release. There are a lot of model release apps out there, but easy release, again, seems to be the most popular one. This is not just for models, but also for locations. Oh, wow. Some locations. Like if you go into Naples Botanical Gardens, they have this whole big like contract you have to sign about if you oh, want wow. to use the pictures for professional use. Oh wow! So that, this is a big so one. So it's a really good, and it's just you know you can here you can all the information. Cindy Baldwin is my model. And you go like this, and you just sign it. That's and great. I can even have a little picture of you in there. Perfect. <laughs> that sounds like it. It's really definitely good. would save time, paper, everything. Oh, you know, when I first started Understand Photography Training Center, we did. We did a model shoot every two weeks. Wow. And then we did big model shoots too. 
And we kind of fell away from it because there wasn't a lot of money in it for me. And I got tired of doing all the planning. Yeah. But part of the thing that was like, oh, I forgot to print out the model release, you know, because they didn't have <laughs> yeah. those back then. Jeez. And now you don't even have to worry right. about it. You just it. have it right Spend on your it. phone. Um, and oh, here's another one, posing app. Uh, now, traveling, you think mm, maybe you're not going to be doing right. so much of, you know, people photography, but if you're with your family, maybe you oh, want to yeah, say, absolutely. oh, let's get some beautiful shots. You're going with your whole family. You're going to have a family, kind of a family get together yeah. in Los Angeles in November, yes. right? So you can say, hey, let's do a family portrait and you can look at this posing app and it will help give you ideas. Oh, that's great. And it'll say, hey, suck in your gut. Well, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> it'll tell you, you know, put your arm out oh. a little to show separation. Just little things like that. It has little drawings. It's I could have really used that cute. last week in St. Lucia. I had um, Sierra actually, my, you know, my daughter had, who's photographer, but had to set the scene up, but it was gorgeous. Um, we were in this, or she was in this infinity pool with the pitons in the background and I like to say, I, you know, if people are, people know that I didn't set up. They're like, you, you didn't set that up, did you? But that would be great. Then I wouldn't have I to ask that anybody. Picture. That picture yeah. is amazing. Isn't it? Yeah, I can't take credit, I guess. I just clicked. But it was beautiful. <laughs> but with all these apps, I might be able to do that myself now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see what else we've got. Okay, Trigger Trap. This free app for both the iPhone and, and Android unlocks the potential of your smartphone's features and turns them into awesome triggering tools. So you can actually use your phone to trigger, like if your camera's over there. Oh, wow. So That's a great. Funny. You could do it for selfies, I guess. Yeah. Be one, Instead one of having thing. the arm out. Yeah. You could. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good the one. shortest arms on earth, too. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's kind of a cool thing. Yeah. They also have several selfie apps, which I'm not up to, but I'm going to talk about now because it's on my mind. And they're better than the selfie app that comes on. Well, the, the app that comes on your camera is a timer. But some of these selfie apps, they will they'll have a timer, let's say, but it'll say, you know, every five seconds take, you know, I want to take three shots. Oh, wow. So you don't have to run back, do it again, run back, do it again. You can do it. You know, oh, that's you can, great. Yeah. That's a really good one. I know. And I, also, I love the ones that just fix everything. You know, a, a friend of mine, Paula, has an app, I'll have to ask her what it is, that she's like, oh, no, don't worry about these pictures. I'm just going to beautify everybody. She goes on her app, and you look 10 years younger, and you don't have any wrinkles, and you're, you're looking good, tan. I don't I'm think like, I have that app. And I'm going to find like, out what that yeah, one is. Out. We have to get yeah. that in the show notes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, now here are some apps. Okay, for me, I travel. I bring my big camera because yeah. I want control. I like to shoot a manual. I like to control my depth sure. of field. I like to have my good lenses, but I also use my cell phone a lot. So we're going to talk about some cell phone camera apps. So you have to put down the big camera and just use your cell phone, but they're coming out with amazing yeah. apps. I have one called pro camera where I can do all kinds of things, which I forgot to write down here. Um, but this one I wanted to talk about because this sounds really cool. It's called slow shutter cam Now if you understand photography, which hopefully you do if you're watching this show <laughs> You know if you have a slow shutter speed, you're gonna get motion blur, right? So let's say you're in Paris Okay, one of the things I did in Paris actually with my big camera is my girlfriend and I we went up to the Louvre We were standing in front of the road and we were panning and yeah. I got a really cool picture of like a motorcycle with the Louvre in the background, yeah. but it was oh, wow. blurry because I was panning. I tried to do that in Cuba. Mine probably didn't come out. Oh yeah, I did <laughs> it in Cuba too. Yeah. I'm like panning, can you tell? Yeah. Well now you get this slow shutter cam app and you can do that with your cell phone. Wow. So, or you could put it on a tripod or yeah. if you don't have a tripod, you could put it on a, you know, a wall or something like that. And like one of the things I did in Cuba in front of that big monument, and what the heck is that called? Which one? Where they do Revolution, Revolution Square. Square. Yeah. Anyway, um, I put my camera on a tripod and just had the cars blurring. Oh, that, all the, the 50s the, cars, I bet, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. that must have been great. So you can do that with oh, this that's, app. That's awesome. I wish I, I knew about that when I was in Cuba. Oh, I know. You know what? I just got, as you know, got back from St. <laughs> Croix and it's like, wow, I wish I knew. I wish I'd known. I wish I'd known. Yeah. We should have done this show last we week. We should have. Oh, I was in, we were out of town. Yeah, maybe two weeks ago. <laughs> we were both traveling. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, okay, so here's another cool app Ooh. that I just found. 360, 360 Panorama. Oh. 
Listen to this. I'm going to read this again. The 360 Panorama app takes panoramas to a new level, creating interactive scenes that you can pan and scroll to look around to see what lies beyond the photo frame. And the way that it works is you stand in one spot and you can take, like say I wanted to take this whole picture like of this room. I could take, I could start here. I could start down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So it would do vertical and horizontal oh, stitching. Wow. And it puts them all together? Yeah. Wow, that's a really cool app. I know, that sounds really that's cool. That's really good for one of those really long, you know, you wanna get a whole, you know, skyline scene or something. That's really nice too. Yeah. yeah, it would just put all well, that together. One of the things that we always forget about when we're doing stitching, you know, panoramas yeah. and stitching, is that we can go up and down. Uh, yeah, so I, yeah, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, so this, this is you could go up, down, That's backwards. Great. <laughs> well, maybe, I don't know about backwards. So you could get a whole bunch of people in the picture, too, that you wouldn't all fit and stitch them all together, too, right? I would think so. Yeah. Just let you know, be careful, because those kind of can distort the people, and they might not like it. Oh, yeah, I probably wouldn't like it either for myself, so, hmm. Depending on which side of the, you know, right. the skinny side or the fat side, you know? <laughs> um, but you can also enter it online, and flatten it to print, or share it on social media. So That's pretty great. cool. Pretty cool. Um, oh, wait, this is the other thing I wanted to say about it. For a different view, you can also switch to stenographic mode, which which morphs your shot into a globe-like scene where you're at the center and your surroundings pop around you. Oh, wow. We gotta get that one. Yeah. That one's $1.99. That's, That's not too bad. Worth it. Yeah. Um, oh, this is the photo timer and self-camera timer that we were talking yeah. about already. A pro HDR. Now, do you know what HDR is? No. Okay, now, <laughs> HDR didn't exist until digital photography, okay? And HDR doesn't really mean any, it means high dynamic range, which isn't, it's kind of confusing because high dynamic range just means that you have a lot of bright, bright stuff in your, in your photo and you have dark, dark stuff. So that's a high dynamic okay. range. Like if everything was gray, it would be a low dynamic range. Okay, Does that gotcha. make sense? Yeah. So with a bright, an exposure for the middle and the exposure for the dark. Oh, wow and the software but blends it. Oh my gosh, that's So great. that, let's say, you know, we've got a window here, let's say we had the shade up and it was really bright and sunny outside. Yeah. We would expose for the dark inside and for the outside and they could both come out. So if you were standing where you're not supposed to, you know, this, this with the sun, it could make that work? Oh, it could wow. show up. It's that's great, yeah, yeah it'll show up. Show up. Oh, that's great, what a good tool that one so, is. Now, the iPhone, and I'm pretty sure the, the uh, droids all have an HDR app built right in. Oh, but geez, this that's one, good to know. Yeah, this one takes it to a, a whole new level. I'll say, wow. And I think, I don't know, does that have a cost on there? No cost. I didn't write down the cost. All right, so now we've taken all these beautiful pictures. Now yes. we're going to edit. Excellent. <laughs> now you got to find out what the beautiful I'm gonna app is. <laughs> that is. Because we need that one. I know. That's a really good app. <laughs> Okay, so the most their most popular editing app is called Snapseed. It's owned by Google, and it, it it's pretty much what everybody uses. Have you used Snapseed? I have not. No, it's the most popular editing. It does everything you need to do. Plus, it has all the cool filters, oh, wow. and and then you can do the filters and tweak. So it's it's a very really very good. good editing software. Is there a cost to that one? I don't think so. Nope, free. So oh, right nice. there, free. That's great. <laughs> the next popular one is called Visco, V-S-C-O. And it's very, very similar, but it's a little more intense, but it doesn't have as many pre preset filters. Although I think you can buy them on the, Yeah, you can buy them from Visco. Um, it does have a sharing option, as like oh, kind of like Instagram. That's nice. But what's nice about Visco is you can see, like if I do a bunch of filters and put them on Instagram, you just see the picture. Right. If you do it on Visco, it'll say, oh, they use this app, and it tells you how Oh, that's cool. the photographer did it. Oh, that's great. That's really cool. Um, Visco is used in conjunction with Snapseed to get the best end result. So, wow. Yeah. So it's the second most popular, but you can also use it with Snap Snapseed. Um, that, and it's also free. <laughs> but even better. I put Lightroom Mobile in, even though I have never personally used it, but uh, there are a lot of Lightroom fanatics in the world yeah. I'm learning. <laughs> that seems, I mean, I can't even imagine it being on your phone, but that 
that's great that you can do it. Yeah, and I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I know that you know I know it's it's not like Lego. Right, you can't right. do as much stuff, but it's it's I guess it's a pretty powerful app. Um, here's something that I found that I thought was really cool. Squirt. Oh. S K R W T. I have not heard of that either. I'm learning a lot today too. I know you know the travel <laughs> ones. I'm going to talk about the photography ones, right? Well, squirt is so cool because you know how if you take well we just talked about it, if you got distorted on a panorama yeah. but you know how if you take a big you know you have your widest lens and you take this beautiful landscape and you see it kind of bowing a little yeah. bit because it gets distorted right well this is going to fix it oh, and you wow. can you can take pictures that you took with your DSLR and put them you know put them in your phone in this app and it'll straighten out oh my gosh that it'll do the great. lens corrections all that kind of stuff wow very very cool Let's see if it costs money. Oh, doesn't say. Okay, over. This it looks really fun too. This is um, basically you can put text or you can put pictures, you know, over the pictures. Oh, cool. And that's they're great. really kind of cool. They yeah. Have a lot. It's called over, so you know, you can just kind of jazz up your picture. Oh, that's it. great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, I just got back from St. Croix. I don't have anything written about this, but I learned about Prisma. Have you heard of Prisma? I have not. Oh, my I took, I can't, I feel bad because I can't give credit because I can't remember who told me about it. <laughs> but I learned about it and then I made it like everybody in St. Croix. I'm like, you gotta get this app. Oh, wow. <laughs> what is it? Oh, Watercolors or it's really Yeah, good. the yeah. choice of oh, different, wow. of different They looks. were beautiful. I loved your pictures that you did that with. I love the Prisma app. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm gonna definitely do that. I thought that was so cool. And it was free. Well, so free. when you do people, do they, you can do people too, or just, not just landscapes? Yeah, or? you can, although, you know, you gotta be careful because yeah. some of them didn't come out so good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I know one in particular, okay, you know, a friend of mine owns a hotel there. So yeah. his social media lady was there and she's like, I need pretty pretty pictures yeah. of drinks. So I was never drinking anything pretty. I just, you know what I learned about? A drink called painkillers. Oh, I know that drink. Oh. <laughs> I, think I, I think I jumped off the Willie T after a few of those in the what? British Virgin Islands. <laughs> oh my God. But they're not pretty, right? No, they're not. So I was at a restaurant. I had a pretty drink. I forgot what it was called because the server told me about it. Okay, I got to get a picture for the social media lady, right? Well, it wasn't a restaurant on the beach. It was an inside restaurant. Uh, and I don't know if you saw that picture, but I, I was trying all these different backgrounds, and my, you know, my lady was with me. Was kind of getting annoyed because you know, right. <laughs> I'm trying to take pictures of the drink, you know. <laughs> so I just kind of gave up, and then I thought, I bet I could make this pretty, and I made it so pretty with the. Really, I have to look at that picture. It's such a cool app. Wow. Okay. Touch retouch for editing. This one is for people. Maybe this is the one. We don't know. Yeah, I'll have to ask her. But this is more, um, I mean, you can use it for more than just people, but you can get rid of the blemishes oh, that's and great. things like that. You can you slim things down? Uh, people always love that. You can remove things. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Dust spots. Remove people or other objects to create a cleaner composition. Eliminate, hmm. eliminate sunspots and flares. So that's nice. So if somebody happens to photobomb you by accident, you can get rid of them. Yeah. Oh, I don't know great. how good it works. We'll see. But it says use your finger and you can highlight like that. Oh, that's cool. I know. That's a really great one. I know. Um, this is another one I just found. It kind of reminded me of Prisma. It's called Fragment, but it like turns the picture into like, kind of like, sh like shattered glass or mosaic oh, wow. or something. But they have like different, different types of it. It was cool. Fragment, wow. that's called. Um, Bonfire Editor Pro has a lot of fun features. Does a lot of the same things we've already talked about. Um, let's see, it also comes with some unique filters, such as Fancy, a filter that turns your photo, photo into watercolor. So that would be That's similar nice. to Prisma, I guess. Um, this Sierra found, and I, I, then I saw it on several different websites, and I would, this is what I wish I knew. Postagram. I've not heard of that one either. Oh my gosh. Listen to this. Okay. Postcards of the classic thinking of you travel mem mem mementos for friends and family. With Postagram, you basically take a picture and you can turn it into a po postcard, hit send, and they they mail it. You know what? I just read about it in a magazine. I didn't realize that's what it was called. But how it cool looks, is that? Oh, I wish I would have had that. Because you yeah. know my son, my son is a musician. ChrisFerrin.com. <laughs> He's really excellent. I can attest to that. <laughs> anyway, he, he's 
sends me postcards. Oh, that's so nice. Oh you, using nice. this app? No, but maybe you will now. But yeah. If, oh, that's great. If you're watching the show, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably so not when he's out on tour, he sends you postcards from. Oh, not, that's great. Not, not all the time. Yeah, but that's nice. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I've got a good son. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course you can't talk about photography and apps without talking about right. Instagram and Facebook because of course these are the preferred way to share depending right. on your age. <laughs> right, right. Instagram seems to be more popular for the younger people and because all of us old folks took over Facebook. Right. So they, they, they went to Instagram. Now we're following them so they're going to find something else. Yeah, they're going to find other place. <laughs> but you have to share. I should say, you should, to me I feel like I have to share. Yes. But if you're leaving your house alone, that's not a good idea. Right. That is a good, very good tip. Like if you're going on vacation, sometimes you might want to delay posting some of the pictures so you're not announcing to the world that your house might be open. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I always have house sitters. Me too. Or do I have dog sitters that stay at my too. house. I have but... house sitters and then, of course, he, you know, he come and go to my house all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I have a big yeah. family too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel pretty safe. But on my six-week road trip, I, I had so much fun sharing and, and it made me feel good because people were saying, oh, I love watching oh, my yeah. come on your trip with you. Yeah, I, know you, I love that too. And that kind of inspired me to keep going. Yeah. Okay, one more thing, storage. Um, Google Drive is a good way. Yes. And Dropbox. Dropbox that. has a new feature that I didn't even know about until I started researching for this. It's a new feature called Carousel. Oh. And it basically helps you organize and sort through your pictures. Oh, that's great. Yeah. What a good, good thing that is. Because I love Dropbox. I'm a I Dropbox love Dropbox fan. too. I, I use Google Drive a little, but I like Dropbox better. I, just, I have not used Google Drive, I just use Dropbox. Yeah, because it's so easy. Yeah, oh, it's simple. When they, that's why they got so popular, because they, yeah. they make it easy. All right. That's true. Do you have any other apps you want to talk about that yeah. I missed? I don't think so. I think we covered quite a lot. Yeah, we came up with ones that weren't even on I know. Us. That's pretty good. <laughs> How about this? When you're taking a selfie, you're supposed to go up high, right? So that's so you look skinnier. Is that what you're supposed to oh, do? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, think about that. If you look down, <laughs> you're going to have a double okay. chin and all that other stuff. If you have to look down, by the way, bend from the waist. Oh, good to because know. think about that. Your chin is going to stick out if you bend from the waist. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. Don't put your chin down. Never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's in that posing app. I don't know. I don't know, but that sounds like that's a great it's app. It's in my posing no class, idea. by the way. I do offer a posing class. Oh. Hands on right now, but soon to be online. Oh, great. Okay, so tell us what are some of your favorite travel apps or photography apps. You can write them right in the comments here on the Facebook, the Understand Photography Facebook page. We'd love to, to see some comments. Um, Ashley, the best virtual assistant ever. I'm sucking up to her because this is going to be a lot of work for her because she has to write all these apps and get them on to our website, which is understandphotography.com. If you click on the Understand Photography Show, this is episode six. All of these apps are going to be, we're not going to write a description. I'm not going to make her do that. Just the list of the apps. So you're going to have to remember or watch this show again if you want to figure out what they were all about. <laughs> Most of them are pretty self-explanatory oh, yeah. though, right? Okay, so next week's show, <laughs> I kind of briefly talked about it. My guest is going to be Bob Brown. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to talk about astrophotography. If taking pictures of the night sky interests you, you're going to love this show. Bob is, he, and people in Naples know Bob Brown. He's a very popular local photographer, and he yeah. is, he's like a brainiac. So yeah. he studies everything, and he, every, I, I just, just from asking him to be on my show, I learned a ton of stuff. Wow. <laughs> Can't wait to watch that one, then. Yeah. Tuning yeah. in, for sure. So we're going to talk about capturing star trails, oh, wow. you know, the best time to, you know, all those apps we talked about. He's going to be like our little oh, encyclopedia on how to do night sky photography. So tune in next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for the Understand Photography Show. Thank you for, to Cindy Thanks Baldwin. for having me. And um, if you want any travel help, you can reach me at uh, baldwintravel.com. Baldwintravel.com. Yeah. And that, again, will be in the show notes on understandphotography.com. Yes. Best travel agent ever, huh? Hey, thanks. But the best photographer. Hey. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>